So let's jump into this. So over the weekend, let's see what happened with Bitcoin over the weekend. It was there's always a low volume. It's normal over the weekend, but we did see a push back up into this Fibonacci level of uh, the 50% Fibonacci level, which it was a 10,800 section. So remember last week the bit the price dropped all the way down to almost 10,000, uh, but we did see a bounce and it's gone all the way back up to to Fibonacci level, the 50% Fibonacci level, and today at the open of the futures market we broke through this uh this fibonacci level so we're currently breaking through um but we gotta hold up on top of it but if we do break through here the next target um is 11k because remember it's a whole number it's a psychological whole number so 11k is the next target um 11 100 and 11200 are the next targets after that and then 11200 uh is with this fibonacci level of 38.2 percent level so once we, if we break through that then we can look at uh these resistances over here which is around 11500 and the next Fibonacci level is around 11,700. And then the biggest resistance we've had over the last year, which is the 12,000 mark. We haven't been able to stay above that. So that's currently what we're looking at in Bitcoin. If we back up to the weekly chart, let's see how the weekly looks. Yeah, so we have that rejection up here. This drop back up to the same area as last year. Look at, look at where we were last year. This is where we're at this year. Basically the same area we're trying to get through there. So we had a really good run. We had one, two, three, four green ones. August was down, was a red month. Oh, this is weekly, my bad. So we had July. July was good. The beginning of August was good. Then towards the end of August, we started going down. So then September, we went way down. Then we've been jumping back up. Last week was red. So we had dropped down, but we got a ping bar on the weekly. So a pin bar is usually a bullish sign. That means that we had a lot of uh, buying, a lot of buyers down here. So when it when it, the market tried to push down, uh, everybody bought the dip and pushed right back up. So usually after a pin bar like this, we'll see a green candle. So I'm expecting uh, this week to be green. We should be green and we should go back above 11,000 and hopefully we can test uh, the 12,000 mark again. So that, that's a, a bullish candle there that we had last week. My preferred long was at 10,600, which is towards the bottom of this range, as you can see. Uh, the next long that I'm the long that I'm currently in was at 10,800, um, which was a breakout entry, uh, because as you can see right here, this this was a resistance. So above that price was a breakout, which we entered here. Um, and it, that shot, you see this breakout, how it shot straight almost to 11k. So that's a a, a trade that we entered. Um, and we're currently in still at that 10,800 uh, entry. So 10,900, um, you're going to want to have a stop loss below 10,800, I would say. So you have to give it, you do have to give it some room. Um, yeah, the, the thing with that entry is 
you're kind of in the middle of nowhere. You know what I mean? Because since your support is going to be 10,800 and your resistance is 11,000, your risk to reward ratio right now on that trade is one to one. You know what I mean? Some trade ideas for anyone not in a long or short on Bitcoin looking for some ideas. Um, if I'm looking for a entry, I'm looking for either a breakout entry above 11,000 or I'm looking for a support entry um, around 10,800 is the first support. Second support is 10,600. So those are the two numbers I'm looking at for well, the three different entries I would have set up. So if I'm entering the breakout entry at 11K, I have my stop set under 11K. Um, so I'll, if my first target here, I would say my first target at 11,000 entry is 11,200. So um, I could have between a 50 to $100 stop loss from the price that I enter on this breakout entry to give me a two to one risk reward. Um, if you're doing uh, the support entry at 10,800, you want to do the kind of the same thing. 50 to 100 dollars stop loss. Your uh, first target is 11k, so it gives you a, a two to one risk reward. And at 10,600 support entry, your first target is 10,800. So 50 to 50 dollar to 100 dollar stop loss gives you also a two to one risk reward. And I would actually, I might even play this this ascending support right here. You guys see this ascending support? This uh, this line starts way back when. Wait, let me go to the daily because this thing is far. Look how far it is. Look at this daily support right here. I mean, yeah, on the daily chart. Uh, this ascending support it came it started back in March. This is the bottom of March uh, 13th of this year and It's been holding up here So I drew it out As a um, Interesting support to play on uh, All right, so let's jump to uh, ethereum so as you guys know, Ethereum usually is uh, pretty much correlated for the most part with Bitcoin. Um, we're looking on the daily chart right now. So it's currently at this uh, Fibonacci level, the 50% level right now. And it's just quietly kind of following uh, Bitcoin so that's why Bitcoin is always the main thing that we trade because everything else pretty much follows Bitcoin if Bitcoin dumps everything's gonna dump if Bitcoin goes up everything will go up for the most part not always just depends yeah so the main thing that we always trade is Bitcoin because uh, because of that because everything follows Bitcoin so that's the main thing we have exposure in in our portfolio then uh secondly we use uh fuck i just moved this whole thing by mistake i forgot to lock it secondly we have ethereum um and we really like ethereum because of the whole oh my god i keep moving this i gotta lock it hold on there there it won't move now I kept moving it. I'm just trying to click on it and I keep moving it by mistake. Um, but yeah, with the whole DeFi projects and all that stuff that's that's going on, uh, we're really big on Ethereum. So when, when with Bitcoin taking off, Ethereum is definitely taking off. And uh, I definitely think it will see a thousand dollars again very soon. I'm gonna read the question out loud. Can I ask how long until you got profitable trading? I've been in this game for two months and absolutely got slaughtered. Currently at a 9K. 
uh sugar kev that's part of the game man it takes it definitely takes longer than two months i can tell you that straight up um it took me about three years probably before i really started before it really clicked for me um so i definitely lost a lot of money on the way um and um it, it definitely took me about i would say three years before i i really became profitable and it all comes down really to discipline and and just learning the plan stuff because it's it's not that difficult to read and to make trades if you're if you set yourself um you know a set of rules and you set yourself a uh, a process and a plan that you always take before making any any trade. So you it's gonna happen. What you have to do, you have to start very very uh, slow. Like you got to be patient. When you first start off, you feel like you have to be in a trade at every given second, every given moment, and that's not the case. Like though, like traders, like me, I've been in the game for a while now. And I am so patient that like I have people in uh, I have a trading group uh, that uh, that people are in and they get upset at me all the time because they feel like they need to be in a trade at every single moment or they're not trading. You know what I mean? And a day trader, any real profitable day trader, if you watch them trade, they're not always in trades like they make very little trades. The majority of the time that you spend when you're trading, you spend it um, looking at charts and just, you know, and coming and making a plan. And then you just after that, you just kind of you sit back and you wait for your price to come. If it doesn't come, you don't enter. You know, you don't just enter because, you you know, uh, you don't FOMO enter, you know, fear of missing out. You, you need reasons why to enter. And then once you decide to enter, once it reaches that price where you've decided to enter, you need to, before you even make an entry, you need to know exactly where you're getting out. You need to know exactly where you're taking profits. And those two points need to make sense. So if you're entering at, at uh, like you're, you entered at 10,900, I don't know what your reasons were for entering. But like I said, I didn't. I don't love that entry because you're kind of in the middle of nothing. There's not really anything. There's not really much at 10,900 that's gonna hold that price there. So right now you're gonna, if if you want to stay in that trade, you basically need to have a stop loss below 10,800 because 10,800 is the support for that range. And then you're gonna have to have a take profit at 11,000 because 11,000 is where a lot of sellers are coming in to defend. That's a price that sellers are going to come in and defend. So you're risking a hundred dollars to make a hundred dollars. You know what I mean? So if you continue in the long term, risk a hundred to make a hundred. If you're right, 50% of the time, you're only breaking even. If you're wrong more than 50% of the time, now you're losing money. So instead, if you if you try to take higher probability trades where, where it has a better risk reward, like tra like entering at 10,800, where you can set a stop of, of like $50 and then have a um, a target of 11K. So now now you're risking $50 to make $200. So you, your your odds now are better in the long run. Now you don't have to be right 50% of the time. You could be right less than that, and you're still gonna be able to. If you're right, now, if you're right 50% of the time, you're gonna be profitable. Versus if you're trading 100 for 100, if you're right 50% of the time, then you're 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 not profitable. You know what I mean? Once that uh, concept starts to make sense in your head that's when you start becoming profitable. So that's just one of the many different uh, rules to um, that you, and disciplines that you need in order to become profitable. Because trading is all about discipline. 
it's all about you know you have to detach your emotions away from it and you have to trade with logic not with emotion you know what i mean um the support here is uh 350 because remember 350 is the psychological whole number here there and you can see back here there is a price action you can see right here price action anytime it gets to 350 there's price action there's like a bounce right here so 350 is definitely a level um, so what I did on this trade I entered at uh, at a break of 350 so once it went over 350 I entered uh, first target being 360 which is a uh, resistance the 50% Fibonacci level on the retracement tool so that's where I first took my first profits um, now I'm looking to take my second at 370 ish and then 380 is a big level as well so 380 I'm probably looking to take profits close to it and then if it breaks 380 I'm gonna re-enter this trade and my first and my two targets are gonna be 390 and uh, 400 so I, I really like that 380 level look if you if you look back here we had a bounce on 380 then we we when we violated 380 is when we broke down if you look here this is 380 380 was always holding here over here we had the bounce we had this 380 support 380 support so 380 is definitely a strong level and it's one that I'm looking for a breakout entry. So if I'm entering um, Ethereum right now, I'm looking, I'm either waiting to, to that uh, 380 level or you could actually set up a um, breakout entry above the high, this high, let me see what's this high, 362. So I would, I would set up a uh, breakout entry around above 362 um, the, the only thing with it, you're, it's highly likely to get stopped out. As you can see here, we had a fake out, boom. So you can set the breakout above there, set your stop loss below 360. So I would probably come below the daily, the daily low. The daily low right now is 356. Let me see, 356. If you're entering 363. Uh, it's too much a, of a gamble there for me. So I would just set what I would do is set up a tighter stop loss here and be fine with getting stopped out and just keep re-entering it or just wait to that 380 level. That's the safer option is wait for, for a breakout above 380. Uh, for support, if you're looking for a support entry here, it's tough because it's all the way down here. 320 is a support entry and 330 is the one with the Fibonacci uh, level. So it'll be tough for, for that price to come back down here. We will need another big drop. So um, the breakout entries are the only two I would play at this point. I'm currently, my, my entry uh, is 350 with Ethereum. Let me see, let me see where we at. All right, let's let's look at this weekly because uh, the daily is just I don't like it. <laughs> I haven't been trading Bitcoin cash lately because it's just just shit right now, you know. Um, so this is a clear entry right here for Bitcoin cash trade, uh, two twenty. So it's been hitting 220 We're on the weekly chart um, if you're looking for for a trade on Bitcoin cash 220 is the magic number 200 is the next one so if you if you're entering at 220 your first target is 230 so you, you have to have so you're, you're, it's a $10 profit that you'll make on your first target. So the most 
you can do as far as your stop loss is five dollars so you would be basically if you're entering 220 your stop should be around 215 it gives you the proper odds to take that trade the proper risk reward to take that trade um, if you're looking to enter on a breakout I honestly don't like any breakout right now but it would probably be 240 or 245 ish I'm trying to look at these numbers over here the thing with 240 250 is gonna be a big resistance number so may maybe use 250 as a breakout so I would I would only enter at 220 support or a 250 breakout probably mm. you can even tr go as far as uh, a 230 breakout but not 230 because it's been there's been look at all these fake outs so you have to go up to 232 is a fine spot for uh, to take a, a breakout entry and then you can have a stop under 230. So I, I would I would keep the stop tight under 230. If it goes under, it's fine. I'll play the breakout again. Um, but yeah, so yeah, like so like 232 would be the entry. Your target your first target is 240. So you're looking to make eight dollars, and you're risking about two and some change. So that gives you a four to one risk reward. So that's a pretty pretty good risk reward. So that's the trade I would take. I just hate this pattern. Cause this is on the weekly. On the weekly chart, it's this bear flag pattern. So you have to keep that in mind. And then if you we look at the daily, we're ranging between uh, 208, under 208 actually. What's the low here? The low is 203. Let me see where this goes to. Yeah, so we're around 208 to 240 is this range. And it's just any any entry here doesn't feel good to me. So I'm probably setting it out for now, but uh, those would be the if I'm looking to enter something here. Those would be the entries on um those would be the trades that I'm looking at on Bitcoin Cash. Cause it's it's in this range right here. But it did the same thing right here. I don't want to look at that ugly chart anymore. Let's look at Litecoin's ugly chart. It's kind of the same thing. Looks very similar. There's just so little movement going on. There's not really much to do here. It's been stuck at this level for basically the last, what, like two, three weeks. It hasn't been able to pass $51 in three weeks. We're at $46. But it's gone as low as 41 so the entry here is $40. This is a support right here. Look at all this price action. All the buyers defending right here. Um, the breakout entry would probably be I mean $50 if you would have to do above this week. This week's high which is around 51ish. What was the high there? 5131. So above 5131 would be a breakout entry here on Litecoin. You would have to keep a stop under 50. And your first target is probably 60. $60 is your first target here. Maybe even lower. It's it's so weird. I don't know. It's it's a weird chart. And it's like weird numbers and <laughs> everything's like 
we it's just in weird areas like this is 57 so your entry is 51 yeah so I guess 51 entry you can take profits at 57 take profits at 64 it looks like so 57 64 um, 70 78 80 those are all the points of interest where I, where I see price action so that, that's what I'm looking at XRP what do we got XRP guys I just realized it's 2 in the morning Jesus uh, XRP we're looking at let's see went up to 30 cents and then it dropped back down so the entries clearly right here 22 cents uh, I mentioned this actually on a previous market analysis 22 cents was the entry so I don't know if any of you guys took that um, on XRP I'm not day trading it I'm only uh, buying for long term so I did buy some at 22 the 22 ish range um, 24.50 is the first target from the 22 then we're looking at probably like 25.50 so if you're looking for a, a new entry look back over here it looks like probably above 26 ish above 26.50 and then your, your uh, take profit zone is going to probably be around 28 29 30 30 is a lot of resistance here look at this from between 30 to 32 a lot of resistance a lot of resistance there still looking at what is this a weekly let's go to the daily Yeah, so 22 is the, the main support that I look to enter. Uh, 23 is a possible one, but you definitely, if you enter at 23, you still need a stop loss under 22. So you could definitely enter at 23, and if it goes down to 22, average down, and then just stop everything out under 22. That's what I would do. For a breakout, I would look uh, to enter above 26 cents. All right, chain link. Let's take a look at chain link. All right, so let's see if it reached our. So it hit 731 was a low here. Um, let me see. I'm trying to see because we, What's I, going on? I know I definitely spoke about this in one of our things. Oh man, I didn't, um, I didn't tag the times. Let me see if I can find it though. Where is this? Oh my god, I'm only by Litecoin. Still on Litecoin? Why was I talking about Litecoin so personal? Link. Here you go. 
Oh. Uh, remember I told uh, so, you guys not. So here it was still too high. It was at 11 there. I'm trying to see where else I did a. Uh, what is analysis. going? As you can see, as it's been going up, 220 range. That's awesome. Fake out. So you have to keep cash. Like has been dropping. Link. Um, last market analysis. We so told this you one guys. I said. I said ten dollars was that entry. So that should be level this one then. support right here. Uh, 61 point. Your next support. Entry. Oh wait. If you're looking to uh, do a support entry, seven dollars was your next support entry here, which is where we're currently at. Aha! And you see, I said it. Seven dollars. I also told you guys if we dropped below ten dollars, I'd sell my positions because we're probably dropping to seven dollars. And look, guys, wow! Am I a magician or some sort? I am a wizard. <laughs> now I'm just playing. But yeah, so seven dollars was uh, on our last market analysis. Uh, seven dollars was the support we're aiming for, which is right here. And look at that! Look at that bounce! Boom. Uh, Kev, I think the the most important thing is not is not really even about indicators, man. The the most important thing you need to focus on is is uh being disciplined, so that um you can set rules for yourself and and creating a trade plan like that's probably the most important thing you can do create a trade plan always have a trade plan before entering any trade any before you enter a trade you need to know where your stop loss is and when you take where you're taking profit you need to make sure that your risk reward ratio is is uh right you know what i mean like it has to be a minimum of a two to one from your first uh, profit zone to your stop loss because you might not always make it to the second profit zone so you always want to make sure that your first take profit is um, the risk reward is a minimum of two to one to your stop loss um, what else yeah definitely risk management you got to make sure that you're only risking a small amount a small percentage of your capital at all times so on a losing on any given trade when you when you're in a losing trade you want to make sh the most you ever want to lose of your capital and this is you shouldn't even be at this point but the most you should ever lose is five percent on one trade of your capital if you're losing more than five percent of your of your por of your portfolio on one trade on one losing trade then you're not trading properly um, but the majority of the time, you want to be between the 1% to 2% range on your losing trade. So when you lose a trade, it should be 1% to 2%. When you're winning a trade, it should be between 2 to 4%. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, you can't go all in, man. <laughs> that's, that's, that's how you lose money. <laughs> that's how you blow up your account real quick. Trust me, man, I have a lot of friends that um, they don't really, they're not really traders, but they, they do invest, but they're more, uh, they, they kind of do the same thing. They just go all in because they, they have the mind state of, you know, go big or go home. Um, the thing is, when you go big, you go home. So eventually you go home when you go, when you go big. So, um. It's, it's a marathon, not a sprint. And that's probably one of the, the most difficult things that I had to learn and keep reminding myself. Uh, because I, like, on successful trades, I was making, like, you know, $50, $100. Like, it doesn't sound all that good. But if you, if you do 10 successful trades in a week, that... 50 hundred that hundred dollars say a hundred dollars is a thousand dollars in a week if you do a thousand a week it's four thousand a month you know what i mean four thousand dollar profit in a month it's actually you did a, a fucking hell of a job you know but people instead of
trying to little by little make that four thousand in a month they want just four thousand in one trade and then what what you end up doing most of the time is blowing your account trying to get that so yeah trading isn't sexy man trading is not sexy i'm gonna tell you right now trading is not sexy it's not meant to be sexy uh trading is not meant to be exciting it's not me meant to be an adrenaline rush it's not it's supposed to be boring it's supposed to be bland it's supposed to be plain it's supposed to be slow and and like uh a kizzle is saying it's all about comp compounding like you just have to compound your profits and your money and eventually those ten dollar wins turn into twenty dollar wins 20 turns into 40 40 turns into 80 80 turns into you know what i mean like it keeps growing it keeps growing and now you're still only risking one to two percent per trade but you go from making ten dollars to making a hundred dollars you know like with time so it, it takes time and people want it overnight and that's the thing it's it doesn't happen overnight and just because you you're trading more doesn't make you a better trader it's not going to make you a successful trader that's for sure it's gonna it's gonna help you get out of trading quicker because you're probably gonna lose your money and quit um but people treat it like gambling and and you can't gamble like if you're if you're gambling you're gonna lose like when you go to casino to gamble you're always playing against the house the house always has the edge you have to learn to be the house and always have the edge when trading and that's how you you become successful and profitable. Oh, I've done I've done stupid things all the time. I do it all the time, man. <laughs> I've done it many times, trust me, man. I've done my my fair share of, you know, 100x leverage trades where it, you know using cross margin and completely blew my entire account in a matter of like five minutes because I got liquidated liquidated my entire account in five minutes I've I've had you know um, I when I first started trading during that whole run of like 2016 and 17 like I made a good amount of money and then one and then one day I remember I was I was doing a stupid trade with leverage and I lost probably like twenty thirty thousand dollars in one trade just eating shit man so so you just have to uh, you gotta learn to be disciplined man you either learn and do it now or the market is gonna force it on you where you have no choice and you're gonna learn by losing money either way if you do this long enough you're gonna learn the thing is do you want to learn without losing money or do you want to learn with losing money you know what I mean like you're gonna learn but do you want to get like the thing is most people don't learn unless until they get burned and that's that's what sucks and like you guys are gonna hear me say this and then you probably in a week from now you're gonna forget and you're gonna trade without using a stop loss and it's gonna fuck you <laughs> or, or you're gonna risk more than a five percent and then you're gonna remember once you lose that money that's when it starts kicking in and you're like shit why did I do this I'm so stupid uh hey kizzle how did how did I deal with the loss um you you just gotta charge it to the game, man. Uh, you have to you have to you know you have to did any anything you're whenever you're investing, you have to detach yourself and your emotions from the money, um, and you have to learn to do that. And yet you can't see losses like you're losing money. You got to see it more like it's a lesson. So you got to figure out why you lost that money and what you can do to prevent that from happening again. That's literally like the process you have to go to. Uh, in the beginning, when I first started training, trading, it was difficult for me because the way I dealt with losses 
was that I wouldn't trade for a week. I wouldn't trade for a month. You know, I, I would just, I would close everything and I would not trade for like a month until I forgot, you know what I mean? Like until it got out of my head and then I'd come back a month later and I, and then the issue with that is that now I missed moves because I didn't come back and trade again. So like maybe I did like, a, let's say I, I entered a breakout entry, right? So if I'm trading chain link, I'm looking at this and I'm like, all right, it looks like $11 is a resistance here. So I'm gonna set, I'm gonna set my entry at $11, right? Let's say I'm setting my entry at 11. Now this trade, this trade comes, it comes up and it hits 11, right? So I'm like, oh shit, this is my entry. So my, my buy triggers. So I enter and look what it does. Boom. It goes right back down. So let's say I, in, on this one, I didn't have a stop loss and I was using a hundred X leverage. This right here will liquidate you this wick right here. So I would have lost $10,000 and I'd be pissed. And then, so I, I would just turn my shit off and I, I wouldn't trade for a week. But then let's say this happened. So the thing is, if, if you stop taking the trades, you're going to miss this one. And this is where you make your money back. So if you're not taking trades, you're going to miss the one that you need to take. So now the way I do it is, all right, this triggers when it drops back, I, I just stop out and I have a very, very small loss triggers. Boom, goes back down. I stop out. It triggers. It goes back down. I stop out. I'm going to keep entering that trade and I'm going to hit it. Eventually I'm, I'm hitting this big green one. It's just a matter of time. So that's kind of, you know, what you got to do. So, and to stop and so that you won't stop out a lot, what you do on these, when you're, when you're doing breakout trades, enter above the previous high. So 11, $11 would have been my first, the first time I entered was at 11, right? And when I stopped out, I'm not going to enter at 11 again. I'm going to enter at the previous high because I don't want to enter at 11, stop out, 11, stop out, 11, stop. You know what I mean? I won't be stopping out every single time. I would have stopped out four times here. So instead of entering at exactly 11 again, I'm entering at about what's the high 11.23. So I'll have my buy around 11.25, 11.30. You know what I mean? I'll give it a little room to make sure that it breaks it above the, this previous high right here. So that's how you you stay, you know, so that you won't stop out all these times. Because also if you just stop out, you know, 10 times in a row. When you finally hit a winning trade, you're gonna still gonna be in the loss. Yeah, man. You you definitely never ever ever sleep without a stop loss. Never never go to sleep without a stop, man. Especially if you're using leverage on the trade. That's the worst thing to wake up to. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so let's let's look at chain link real quick because I, I don't think we uh, spoke about it too much um, So the entry here for Chain link was seven dollars this range right here and you see that's exactly where it bounced Now the next and then the next breakout entry was ten dollars You'll see there is a resistance here at ten Pri a lot of price action and then it broke out um, right now it's at $11 resistance. So if I'm looking at enter here, I'm looking to enter either back at $10 as close to $10 as possible, or I'm looking to enter above this previous high here. So you want you want to enter above, uh, what number was this? $11.25, like I, like I mentioned before. Uh, so if you enter the breakout, your stop has to be under $11. Um, let me see. So you're, you're going to have about maybe a 50 cent risk. And then your, your first target is going to be 12. Uh, so you're, you're going to need less than a 50 cent risk. You're going to need probably about, you're going to be entering at 25. 
So that's 25 cents. And under 11, probably like a 30 cent risk. 30 to 40 cent risk. If $12 is your first, just to have the proper risk reward. Because $12 is not a very strong resistance, but it, it is going to be one. But your your real next target is twelve fifty. Look at all this price action right here. But that's in the zone of twelve to twelve fifty. So it's this whole zone right here. There's a lot of price action. So it's gonna be resistance. Alright, I think we covered chain link. Let's jump into Tezos. Tezos finally uh, bounce here at two dollars but if I'm looking for an entry same two things I'm looking at two dollars or a breakout above probably the same high uh, which is around 225 230 but it's such a uh, you're gonna risk 30 cents basically for 30 cents 30 cents for 40 cents. I don't like it. So I wouldn't enter the breakout. I'd only enter a support entry here, which would be $2. Uh, but I'm not currently, I don't day trade Tezos. Uh, I do have long positions on them though. But I do not day trade it. Um, Neo. Let's see what's going on with Neo. I like Neo at tw at twenty dollars. Twenty dollars. I I entered last time at twenty, and wrote it up to twenty five. I'm doing the same thing now. Twenty dollars is a good support to enter. So you want to enter as close to twenty as possible, with your target being twenty four and twenty five dollars. That twenty four to twenty five range, and twenty six would be your. So basically, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six are your three targets. And then you would put a new order above 26. It would be a breakout entry there. So that's why you want to take profits. You want to have three different profits. Take profit, take profit, take profit, and then breakout entry. Boom. You put a whole new position. And, and doing it like that, you if in case the price gets rejected at resistance, now you could re-enter at $20 with your profits. If it doesn't, and it keeps going now you're re-entering a breakout trade and you're not missing any of the action so that's why you always take profits cardano uh it looks like it bounced here on this support the 800 and it's currently right back at this uh at the 900 so i i spoke about this, this is why i put this level here so the the you would have bought basically on this breakout above 800 and your target would have been 940 and 968 it looks like I marked up here uh, right now if you're looking to enter I would be entering either back at the support or above 1000 is where I'm looking to enter above 1000 for a breakout and oh west I know you're very interested here with Tesla did you did you trade uh, Tesla at all last week let me see what the weekly candle looks like for it for last week yeah, so I think we we spoke about this 450 level last week, right? So 450 is still the resistance here, as you can see. It dropped it, damn, dropped it all the way down here. Jeez, it dropped a hundred dollars. That's crazy. <laughs> That's like a hundred dollar drop. So remember last week when I told you that there. The thing about Tesla when you're trading Tesla is that it's super volatile and it'll just 
jump in both directions at any given time and it doesn't give a fuck about anything <laughs> it doesn't give a fuck about you your family or elon's family for that matter it just goes crazy in both directions so you have to be very careful when trading it um so i mean the reason that it dropped like this you, you know why it dropped right it's because tesla had its battery day or whatever they had like some sort of conference or whatever where they're supposed to um unveil reveal a new battery and it, that didn't end up happening so everybody dumped it basically they bought the rumors sell the news situation here so that's why this was green green buy the rumors sell the news classic that's a classic move happens all the time um so i mean we're basically looking at the at the same levels though above 350 is basically the the breakout level uh i'll probably try to stay above yeah above 350 is a breakout level probably above this one so this one's at 453 and this is at 461 so I'd, I'd probably do a, a order above 453 if I'm looking to enter a breakout there um, here it's right at that 400 support so I mean as long as it stays above 400 this is a good entry right at that 400 level uh, the idea is you want to use that support so you want to sell probably you want to sell I would sell below this one I'll use this low low of the day this daily low as a sell point so that daily low is 391 so you and then your target would be probably 420 420 is a very popular number on Tesla by the way so 420 um 430 440 basically at every ten dollars there's a lot of price action at every whole whole number for every ten dollars um so you just got to be watching it very carefully and and taking profits so if i'm entering at four 400 i'm definitely taking profits at 420 430 440 and then I'm setting up breakout entries above 450 and if it breaks 450 453 then I'm entering it for whatever number this was 455 high was a high here so it breaks that I'm entering it um, again a new entry above here so I would enter as close as 400 as possible and a new breakout entry above 450 And if it drops again like this, then I'm looking at 350 for entries. Kev, uh, I'm currently trading um, Bitcoin and Ethereum right now, the two that I'm trading right now. Uh, West, you're in at 403. All right, you're good then. <sighs> Excuse me. You're good, man. Just keep a stop below 400. Uh, probably around 390. Um, as long as that stays within that range, you should be fine. Take profit on the way up and then set up new entries above 450. That's what I would do.